Roll up your sleeves, pour yourself a drink, because this is Off the Cuff. I'm Dan. And I'm Kyle, and welcome back to another Off the Cuff segment, everybody. As you know, every Monday, we like to release an episode featuring a film we saw on the weekend, or a brand new film we didn't want to check out, which we've never seen before, or an old film we've never seen before. Strict, All that good stuff. Strictly giving our thoughts off the cuff on this series. As the title of the show says, so honestly, if it's not clear enough for you, um, I don't know quite what to say. But here we are yet again, yet again on a beautiful evening, just talking to you about what we just saw. And Daniel, what did we just see? Colossal, featuring Anne Hathaway and Jason, what's his name? Sudeikis. From, Jason um, Sudeikis. Good old Saturday Night Live and We Are the Millers vacation same thing as we were the millers he's in uh what's that other one that you like and lots of people or you hate and lots of people do like that's honestly kind of vague <laughs> <laughs> um i'm not sure exactly um, oh uh, they get coming. drunk in vegas oh the hang what happened in vegas i don't think he's in oh. that i don't think he's in that do i think th- he's in that thinking of ed helms the guy who's on the office as well hmm it's like ed helms uh what's his name stupid zach alfanakis and uh bradley cooper they're like the three right okay they're kind of similar dudes, though, to be honest. I think they both might have been on SNL. So, somewhat funny white dudes, all interchangeable sometimes. Gotcha. You know? uh, but nonetheless, we did see Colossal. This is a Neon released film, which is some movie it, production company, Neon, which is like, they're trying to be like A24, which if you're not familiar with that, they are, sorry, distribution company, not production company. They're like, they put out like, uh, I don't know, like Green Room and. and also, Spring Breakers, a lot of uh, a lot of podcast episodes. Also, um, Swiss Army Man, um, Free not Free Fire. Oh yeah, Free Fire. So like Pretty high good. higher budget indie films, exactly. lower budget mainstream. Exactly films. that kind gotcha. of middle point, and that's kind of where we're at with this one. I mean, this film here it cost fifteen mil, and I gotta say, in terms of budget wise, I think they really produced a quality film in terms of looks and sets, and you know, I totally expense. agree with that. Yeah, uh, for sure. So I think I think if Neon's gonna keep making films and of this uh, budget and you know this type of uh, casting. A hierarchy, you know, I would say Anne Hathaway, she won an Oscar, she's automatically up there, and Jason Sudeikis, he's pretty well known. Like, they're getting higher build casts, is what I'm trying to say. And so I think, I think in terms of using the money and the budget that they are starting out with, I think they're off to a good start. I put that, I would put it that way. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I also, gotta say, dig the poster, guys. This one yeah, really, really fucking yeah. good poster on this nice one. Nice poster, dig Just it. Just pull up Colossus, you'll see the poster right it away. It reminds me of like an old high school project we did called The Scanner Darkly. Well, did, do you have you seen the film The Scanner Darkly? I haven't. Because that's that's what the project was based off of, was the yes. movie Scanner Darkly. Yeah, and I, I did know that. The but. kind of uh, technique is called rotoscoping. So gotcha. actually, people don't really even do what we did back then. What we did is we literally took bits and pieces of Illustrator, I guess, like we, shapes to make an image. Yeah, we just use the pen tool repeatedly in in. There's literally a plugin in After Effects now that just does that entirely. Really? Yeah. So like, honestly, it's no one really does it by hand anymore, as right. far as I know. <laughs> I don't think this is. It's the, yeah. this, it's the kind of thing where it's the effect. It's kind of effect that it works sometimes or it doesn't. You really kind of gotta know what you're working with. And in this case, uh, I think it works. I don't know. I liked it. But moving on to the film. In particular, weird fucking movie. Let's, right let's do a synopsis really quick, um, as best <laughs> okay. as we can. Sure, sure. You want to throw this one out? Yeah, I'm going to do the synopsis, but I'm not going to do the trailer synopsis, okay? Because I'm going to throw out the fact that if you've seen the trailer for this movie, um, it 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 maybe is slightly mis just ever so slightly misleading. I would say misleading. I think that's fair to say, honestly. Yeah. So, I guess to me, this story is about Anne Hathaway. Facing what she knows as her inner demons and uh, even some childhood uh, thought to be friends found nemesises. Nemeses? Nemesis? I don't know, but I'm saying slightly spoilers on that. I don't know if he's a nemesis or not. Right. We're not sure. <laughs> but but what, why, why, why is she here? Like, what, what's going on in the film? More so less. essentially, uh, uh, she finds out that her motions within a certain location of a small town... Uh, it takes place in, uh, like in a park. Uh, her movements inside this park at a certain time of day control a giant monster or creature that is, for whatever reason, only in Seoul, Korea. Only in South <laughs> Korea. It only crushes South Korea. Well, I guess we can go into it. The movie kind of describes why it's Seoul, but kind of loosely. 
It's like the project she was working on as a kid was based on Seoul, Korea. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and there were some events early in her life that led to this weird mimicking of this monster come, come to be. And I will give the film some credit in that regard that the way it kind of tells like the backstory to this crazy shit that's going on, I think it's done really well because it go- kind of describes it throughout the film rather than like trying to give some... You know, it's a weird fucking idea to begin with, and you're going to have to suspend your, you know, your motion of disbelief for a while to try to get it. Mm -hmm. And it takes its time to develop, you know, the truth behind this into the plot. And I actually quite like that because I was like, man, if they're going to spend like 20 minutes describing why this monster is here and why she's there exactly, it's going to be boring. And instead, they kind of got right to the action of it and was actually participating in it. And I... Honestly, thought that was a good pacing choice, to be honest with you. But it's it's tough to jump into this movie without jumping into exactly what I liked and disliked about it. Um, well, so I, the, think I guess more or less should... talk about your overall feeling because I think we can. I will say one thing: we went with a group of people, and we actually almost never do this for this kind of stuff. It's usually just me and you in a room drinking, watching a movie most of the time. <laughs> yeah, for being honest, <laughs> then yes, most yeah. of the times. And so, actually, I can't think of an off the cuff we've done where the film in question we've seen with more people and i only bring didn't, the, didn't uh kwan come to a fist fight no she didn't she didn't mm-hmm. i don't think i think the only thing we ever did we did the star wars whatever rogue one or whatever with with drew but he actually wasn't like there to see the film with us he just was on the right. cast yeah. nonetheless i only say that because i do think there's a level of you know we talk after the film but when there's so many different opinions coming in there's a level of like Oh, I thought that was kind of shitty. But if someone loved you, you're like, oh, well, it wasn't that bad, actually. Or if it's like, oh, I hated that. Yeah, so y- your your sharp points become a little bit more rounded because of yes. everyone's opinion. And that can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing. I I just maybe I want to I think in out. this case, it's a good thing. Um, I uh, And I think we can still bring up some of our sharper points. But I guess my, yeah. my overall feeling from this movie was very weird different um not to the point of necessarily disliking it but definitely not to the point where i was like fuck yeah this is was was amazing well the movie takes this weird like middle of the road approach for but actually it kind of doesn't like a good portion of the film it takes this middle of the road approach where the film the tone of the film is kind of you know kind of com comedic but then also kind of sullen and kind of dark but then also comedic so i guess you know a traditional dark comedy but then, near the end of the film, it kind of ramps things up to 11 into a certain direction. And that's kind of where the film started to work for me a bit more, to be honest. Because before that, I was like, hey, everything's just going with the motions. She's doing this again. Yeah. He's doing that again. Sure. I felt like it could have been tighter. Like, it was a little yeah, bit loose. Yeah. There was maybe some I could see that. stuff that was not super necessary. Um, I, think, I think my biggest complaints um, are that of, uh, you know, the, that are commonly found in some beginner indie films so like, kind of a thing so i feel like the distinguishing points of the movie for me were didn't transition well so for example her finding out that she controlled this monster that was uh crushing soul the way that she found out felt very kind of like eh, okay you just sort of it was very like what are the chances of that yeah but here i'll it I'll, does tie up a little bit later but i'll, I'll get kinda, you i'll get sorta. you back with this it's like I agree with you, but it's based on a concept that's so ridiculous. It's like, how would you realistically describe that? True, you but know, uh, but it, I I don't know. I'd like to think that maybe there's a way out there, and I'm not saying that I could do it better. I'm just saying that that's it maybe half asked you. Well, it just felt it just felt like some some transitioning points of the movie were were like they weren't like oh shit. It was kind of like oh, it, it was not. I don't know. It wasn't a huge. Um, I don't know. I just had a tough time jumping on board with it. And all honesty, that could just fall on Anna Hathaway's fucking head, to be honest. Because like you said, she's a very non-likable person. No, I she's totally really not. It, it, almost every role she's given lately is a non-likable person. And the issue with her in this film is she's presented in a way that she's not to be liked in this film. And then we're, grow- we're supposed to like her by the end of it. And... Uh, personally, I kind of did, kind of didn't. Like, I mean, I, I didn't feel any str- any strong emotions for her. Or, or for her well, you kind of like some of the things she does. Yeah. It doesn't mean you fucking like Anne Hathaway. Exactly. Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't necessarily hate her. I think she's okay. I just think she's she can give a really strong performance, but, you know, when she's just kind of being Anne Hathaway in a film, 
it comes across just a little too like snarky and kind of I don't know, uh, big of her, big of herself, and kind of just annoying in a way. I feel like this word's overused lately, but I'm gonna say privileged. <laughs> sure, I mean, t- I mean, but that would also be her character in this film to a degree. You know, she's she That's literally just thinks true. the world circles around her, and she can get everything she wants. Mm-hmm. And they do uh, approach that in the film. So I would agree with you, but I think more or less the the thing I really took home from this movie was just really subverts the audience's expectations of what is supposed to happen in the the kind of traditional aspects of this movie where it's like oh we got a guy and a girl we know what's gonna happen or we know what's not gonna happen or we got you know we we got we got uh moral conflicts we know what's gonna happen you know it's not gonna happen and it always takes this different approach and i do think that is jarring to the audience in a good way and also to a bad way where you know we had half the people we saw today we went to the movie today today uh thought you know it just didn't work for me and then uh Roughly the other half being like, hey, you know what? It, it was okay. It worked in a, yeah. it worked in a sense, and so it kind of gives these different perspectives that I think can work or just don't work. And the issue is that it it um it's so not sure of what it wants to be in a way, but at the same time, it, it has a good it's approach. Doing. Yeah, know, it, it, it's, it's got weird. a super. It's got a really neat approach and idea. But yeah, you're right. It's it. It feels undecided at points. Exactly. Not everything, but just at points, uh, yeah. it's undecided. And the issue with it is because I think those points end up sticking out a lot. And I will say, though, that the latter half of this film, I thought, was so much more interesting. There was a lot more going on, and there's certain character development uh, I, I, aspects that I did not see coming. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm on board with this. This is different. I totally, I like I totally it. and completely agree. I think they could have jumped into the fact um, of the, uh, gosh, I don't want to give spoilers. That's no, fine. Just, I mean, there's, there's a discreet change in the film. Yeah. Know? There's a, there's a, there's, yeah, there's a discreet change in the film, but I think that could have happened maybe sooner because that I wouldn't, would have enjoyed to see more of it. I feel, um, I feel both ways. I agree with you, but well, at the same time, I like, how, I didn't like her boyfriend being around like the Tim guy or whatever. That was a little like, come on, get out of here guy. Or like tie up the scenes quicker. To me, this movie kind of like, it does this thing that a lot of, uh, Ben Stiller films do where it's just irritating the audience for like, comedy's sake. This movie did the same thing, but to kind of progress the story. And I think it kind right. of, I think it kind of worked in saying. some ways. Where it was like, yeah, her boyfriend shows up, and it's like, oh, what the fuck's this guy doing here now? Things are just getting, yeah. I'm just annoyed. Or and, fucking, uh, what's his name? Uh, is his name Jason? Justin? Jason? Like the guy who's Jason Sudeikis? Yeah, Jason Sudeikis. Character Sudeikis. Name is. God, yeah, whatever his fucking character name is, I have no idea. He lights a fucking giant firework in, in the middle of his bar. Yeah, that was... That whole scene, I was kind of like, what? Why? But later I found out, like, oh, I get kind of what they were doing, but I don't think it really made sense, but I get it. Well, so f- I guess that's how I felt about some of the transition scenes, was kind of like, I didn't get it when I saw it. I got it later. I still wasn't kind of super on board with I would it. agree with you in that scene because the scene before that made me feel otherwise otherwise about him. Right. Where he's kind of, uh, he's approaching their conversation and the relationship as, you know, them talking to each other into a different realm and then he takes a 180 again. And it's kind of like yeah. a, the second 180 in a yeah. way. And so by the time that fireworks you're talking about comes up, I was just like, okay, so did you really have to have him be different for a scene? Like, you know, yeah. just, just, Take it as it is. I'm going to bring up one other scene. Uh, I don't want to talk too negatively about this movie because I think uh, it's, I mean, it's very to, neat. You but, should. Well, no, I, I really don't. I think I think it's I think it's very interesting. I'm not going to say it's perfect. I, I'm not going to say that you know I loved it to death. Uh, but uh, there's one scene I want to bring up that is. Uh, there is a certain character in the movie that he's kind of like a, I don't know, he's a side character a, a, of some kind. You almost think he's going to be a side plot, but he's not. Anyways, him and Anne Hathaway have a thing for a quick second. They hook up or whatever. Right. But Jason Sudeikis' character has this moment in the park where he's like fucking thoroughly, f- like you could see the look of frustration on his face. But then nothing really comes of that. He never really gets mad at the guy. They never talk it out see i kind of like that really <laughs> it was just kind of like I, I don't know I, I i didn't like it it didn't make sense it didn't seem to fit because it was like nothing started stirred came about it there was no it felt like a meaningless scene to me but that's kind of what i think i'm trying to get at where it's like it's subverting the expectation where it's like that may seem like a throwaway scene 
But at the end of the day, the way he reacted to that, the overall feeling he reacted really contributed to his character development in the future. It wasn't so much that he had jealousy. It was more him as a person, how he feels about right. situations. And like, But I would I, say that's maybe a, a small flaw of the way that the film was put together, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, like I would say that, yeah, I could see that scene working, but I think it could work better if they, I don't know, changed the way that... Oh, there she goes. <laughs> there she blows. If they changed the way that the movie flowed a little bit. Hmm. I don't know. I, I just felt like uh, there were certain points that didn't totally click for me uh, in some of it. Uh, but I do think it was a super cool idea. And you know what? I was really excited to see Anne Hathaway in something like this. That was the selling point in the trailer, as misleading as it was. I don't know, though. I don't think her performance was necessarily that bad. I think it was fine. Honestly, this is this is probably the best film I've seen her in a while, to be honest. And I'm, I'm not saying that in a negative sense. I think... She gives a performance she was hired to give. Like, I don't think she really extends anything further. I don't think she's lacking. Mm-hmm. It's it's fine. In fact, I would rather see her in roles like this than, you know, some big, like, period pieces or these big blockbusters. Even uh, a film I saw a long time ago, Love and Other Drugs, comes to mind. And I didn't mind her in that. I think she's fine. These kind of more contained roles and like as much as this is a monster movie in a way it's it's really not and i think her perspective on that as a character was toned down enough for me to kind of be like okay she's not overacting like she usually is that being said she didn't blow me away she was fine i will say though jason sudeikis is fucking incredible in this movie like in my opinion standout character he's standout funny he, d- he definitely yeah he carries the movie i think well it's not even not even his comedy it's really just you know his his kind of body language and you know ha- as he turns from comedic to more serious throughout the film more serious uh, tones and mannerisms it really fucking works for me i do think his character is a little flawed but i think him as a his, him in terms of his performance it really it really shunned for me i think mm-hmm. i thought it was a good part of the film but you know it is it's a weird one because the thing is, is that we're talking back and forth. We're talking like how, you know, this is good about it. This is bad about it. This is good about it. This is bad about it. And I do think it comes down to this is just a really creative but weird movie. And it has creative elements that work and it has creative elements that don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a strange one in that sense. I'm, I'm riding the fence totally on all aspects of the movie. Though I, I, I'm going to come away and say like, cool, like... Uh, Final thoughts are for me probably yeah props for trying something different as you mentioned before It's always props for doing something. Well, totally like I mean this changing it up I mean the premise alone was weird to me like it was like I I was thinking to myself like who is this movie made for? Like it's yeah. like well, I think I even said this in the last cast. I was like, who the hell is this movie made I for? I think it's made for guys like us, basically. Ah, but even then, it's like it's so much not a genre, <laughs> you know, like yeah. Wikipedia calls it a black comedy film which sure I guess but uh, <laughs> like it, it just it doesn't have a demographic to me and I mean what are and we we're movie goers we're not really a demographic we and that's funny because I think that's what, why the trailer's misleading right well, because sure. the trailer leads you to think that it's maybe a love story or an oddball comedy that honestly doesn't bother me as much because I get that the trailer is purely marketing and they're trying to market this movie that almost seems unmarketable to me it is they're, a, they're doing their best at it yeah you're right it's misleading but fuck I don't know what else they do to be honest like yeah uh, I don't know. It's it's a weird one, right? I think, I don't know. I think. What are you what are you leaning on this? I I, I don't know. As, it's it's as, a weird one to not as, spoil. So I don't know what else really we, we could really go on about. Um, I'm closing thoughts. Interesting movie. I like they tried something different. Um, I think there's parts of it that uh, were a little jumbled for me, and mostly in like. Uh, in in the characters, uh, not you know, it's not as if Anne Hathaway's performance was like totally blah. I'm I, you know, uh, it's not like Jason Sudeikis was totally blah either. Matter of fact, his was pretty good. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for a rating on this guy two and a half out of five. Beauty I think I'm I think I'm riding the fence <laughs> on it. I think I'm fifty fifty both ways. I think I'm just gonna go and say yeah, fit you know. Answer me this: What would you rather watch first? This or Beauty and the Beast? Again? Yeah, theoretically speaking. I think I could go both ways, man. Interesting, man. You'd rather watch... Um, I'm more thinking about Beauty and the Beast. I think it's worse I'm than th- two and a half. I'm, I'm talking... <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I only bring it up because that's the only other movie we've given two and a half, I think. But uh, fair enough. I'm... I honestly, I should have given Beauty and the Beast a two. Me God too. Damn it. It's a kind of, yeah, we won't get back into that. <laughs> but fair enough, fair enough. I feel you on that. I'm gonna go just a little bit, of, a little bit above on the on the scoring, and I'm gonna give it a three out of five. 
I do think this is a film that is severely flawed and like what you were talking about earlier, Daniel, like a lot of pacing issues and even some editing choices in terms of cutting the film together that it really could have been better. But yeah. I will say that I think I, I kind of, I think it's a movie where the tone will either rub you the wrong way or it will work for you. And I got to say the tone overall works because it was this very melodramatic kind of dark tone where, you know, it, it's very hateful in a way and very, uh, self-deprecating and it but yet it used it in a smart enough way that you know i didn't find it just you know it was kind of honest to itself yeah, yeah. and i i, I totally like i can totally get that and i mean it's it's weird to see a character i'm not gonna try to i'm trying not to spoil this it's weird to see a character that is truthfully like filled with hate you know a lot of times villains or any other character in a film will straight up have Fl- they'll be flawed characters. They but have, have some kind of motivation, right? But see, yeah, yeah. See, I go back and forth on this because they have mm-hmm. motivation, but they also have, they also have uh, good and bad qualities about them. In yeah. this film, we get a character we end up learning that almost has no good qualities technically, and but at the same time, you're right. He doesn't have motivation, so because of that, it's a little sloppy. And I mean, that's why I'm not giving this thing a five or a three. Yeah, that's a good word to describe this. Maybe not sloppy, but maybe just like. Not organized. So sloppy. <laughs> so I, I, sloppy sounds too harsh. Well, you know? I mean, I, we gave enough context to say why we feel that way. I mean, if someone were to take a line from this podcast and just say, oh, they said it was sloppy, that's out of context. We, we described it. I think sloppy's yeah. fine. I think sloppy's fine. I don't know. I, I'm going to go ahead and say I would actually recommend Colossal just because I do think everyone who views this is going to have a different point of view on it. And you're going to love it. You might hate it. And it's it's a weird one. It's it's a very m- mixture. It's a very mixed bag of genres and ideas and you know tones, and some of them work, some of them don't. But I do. And it's different, right? Yeah. Yeah, I give hundred percent respect for something being very different out of the box. I don't know if we're ever going to see something like Colossal again. So I mean, well, I would hope that it inspires someone to do something different, or maybe along these lines. Well, it's not making much money, so I don't know if we're going to get another thing like well, this. Well, <laughs> it might inspire someone. Let's stick to That's the positive true. side. Well, it does, and it it takes it takes uh, aspects from different genres and really mixes them together. And I mean, if at the very least we saw something like that again, not necessarily a monster movie mixed with a dark comedy, but you know, different genres mixing. Ma- mashing and mishing together whatever you want to call it yeah that'd be cool i hope to see more of that i'm gonna recommend colossal i think it's worth a worth a view what do you feel about that i agree also gonna recommend that's a two and a half for me that's a three for you three for me and i, I you know i it, like we were talking about though i think you were even a bit more critical on it as soon as we started as soon as we finished the film and i was a bit more above and we kind of yeah and then things kind of de- mel- mellowed out again this could come down to the group conversation but, afterwards but nonetheless it, it means but I think good. for the best I think for the best too and I just wanted to bring that up because it's never really happened before that I can think of mm-hmm. um, and that's why we don't have to like re-rate something like Fast 8 <laughs> But, you know, it's fine. Uh, Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out the show this week. Really appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Follow on SoundCloud. We're also on uh, Google Play Music now. Google Play Music. So pick that up if you're Android. All you Android Android users out there. Or some people, I guess, just have it on their phone. You can do it on iOS if you really want to. There you go ahead. Subscribe. That's cool. Uh, Pick it up. That's just another way to get the show to you weekly. Uh, Also like us on Facebook. Uh, Follow us on Instagram. All that stuff. We'll have it in the show notes. Give us a tweet. Sure, tweet at us. Why not? Uh, we don't tweet on there enough, but we will be. We were slacking on the on the social media, but I've been I've been trying to pound it out lately. So uh, we'll get there as we as we once did. Anyways, we'll end it here. All right. I'm Kyle. I'm Dan. Cheers. Shaka bra for old times. Okay. <laughs>